Romeo Robles. Present. Rafael Munguia. Present. Luis Madrigal. Present. Andy Castro. Present. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Next item is approval of minutes. Review the minutes for approval. Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'll make a motion for approval of minutes if there's no corrections or anything we Okay. Who's a, need a second? Second. Second. Somebody got it. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Next item is public hearing. gentlemen, uh, Della Robles, Planner One for the City of Far. Tonight we have seven items for your recommendation. The first item is a tabled item and it will remain tabled. The second item is a tabled item and it will remain tabled. The third item is a tabled item and it needs to be untabled. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to untable CUP 190319. Second. Okay. Second. Mr. Ramirez. Mr. Ramirez. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Okay, this item requires a public hearing. Anybody signed up to speak for or against it? No one in the affected area, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Open up the item for board discussion. May I read the item, Mr. Chairman? Uh, okay, well, we've, we've tabled and untabled it so many times, I thought I knew I it. I do apologize. Um, the item, Myra Elizabeth Pedraza has filed with the Planning and Zoning Commission a request for a life of the use conditional use permit to allow an oversized storage unit larger than 120 square feet in a single family residential district R1. The property is legally described as being Lot 48, Los Ranchitos No. 3 Subdivision, Far, Hidalgo County, Texas. The property's physical address is 7517 South Plata Lane. The Fire Department, Code Compliance Division, and Planning Division all recommend approval. 62 surrounding property owners were notified of the request by letter and a legal notice was published in the Advance News Journal. Staff received three telephone calls, two for information only and one in favor of the item, and one person came in for information only. Development Services is recommending approval of the request for a life of the use conditional use permit to allow an oversized storage unit larger than 120 square feet in a single family residential district R1. If approved, this item must comply with all of the following conditions as set in your packet before you. This item will go before the City Commission meeting of May the 20th, 2019 at 4 p.m. And gentlemen, we do have representation in the audience. Okay. Uh, any questions? There was an, an issue with the easement, wasn't there? Has that been resolved? The applicant has obtained letters from all of the <coughs> utility companies and none have protested or have any issues with her placing the storage unit on the easement. Okay, so that meets all the requirements. Then. Yes, sir. Okay. Any further board discussion? A uh, question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, will this have lighting on site? Electricity? Electricity? If it will storage? have electricity? Will it have electricity inside the storage room? Uh, I'll go ahead and let Ms. Pedraza answer that. Ms. Pedraza? <coughs> Um, it will not have electricity for right now, but we just do like an extension whenever we go and look for something. Okay. But uh, there's none. All right, thanks. Uh -huh. Okay, no further board discussion? I had one question. Okay. Why does it have to be encroaching the easement? What, what is it? Is it five feet? Uh, she, has a, she has a utility easement. Uh -huh. uh, there is a 15 utility uh, foot utility easement in the back of the property. 15 in the back. 15 in the back of the property. Uh, again, Ms. Pedraza has obtained letters stating they don't have any issue with her placing it because it is on Patton Pierce. 
Okay, you got other questions? Thanks. None? No. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll close the board discussion, open up the floor for any motions. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion for approval. Second. Sorry, the meetings. Second. Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. And motion carries. Next item. Item number four. John R. Gonzalez, doing business as Tacos y Mariscos El Sinaloense, has filed with the Planning and Zoning Commission a request for a conditional use permit and late hours permit to allow the sale of alcoholic beverages in a general business district C. The property is legally described as being 0 0.12 acres more or less out of lot 194 Valle de la Primavera subdivision far Hidalgo County, Texas. The property's physical address is 6811 South Jackson Road. The property is currently zoned General Business District C. The surrounding area is zoned General Business District C to the north and south, single family residential district R1 to the east, and the city of far limits lie to the west. This area is generally designated for commercial use in the land use plan. The police chief, the fire department, code compliance division, health division, and planning division all recommend approval. The hours of operation will be Monday through Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. and Thursday through Sunday from 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. 44 surrounding property owners were notified of the request by letter and a legal notice was published in the Advance News Journal. Staff received no response to the letters or to the legal notice. Development Services is recommending approval of the conditional use permit and late hours permit to allow the sale of alcoholic beverages for on-premise consumption in a general business district C, subject to the applicant and site being in compliance with all city departments, requirements, and city ordinances. This item will go before the city commission meeting of May the 20th, 2019 at 4 p.m. And we do have representation in the audience. Okay, would the applicant like to say anything right now? No, no. sir. Okay, thank you. Is that on because of public hearing? Anybody signed up to speak? No one in the affected area has signed up, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. I'll close the public hearing and open up the item for board discussion. Any questions? I have one question. Yes, sir. Um, and looking through your, to the packet uh, on the menu, I see that there's uh, liquor and, uh, and uh, other micheladas already listed on the menu. How is, how is that? If it, this hasn't been approved yet. Oh, if it's already on the menu, we require a menu in order for us to go ahead and um, place it, how would you say it? In order for us to do the correct fees for the ABC, he needs to provide a complete menu for us. So if he was going to have this on the menu, of course he would have to place it on there. Uh, okay, I didn't, I didn't uh, understand But that. He, he is aware that he cannot sell alcoholic beverages until his ABC is, is complete. Okay, any other board discussion? None? Okay, we'll close the board discussion, open up the floor for any motions. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Next item. Item number five, Eduardo Lara representing Richard L. and Sherry L. Wolf owners has filed with the Planning and Zoning Commission a request for a conditional use permit to allow the outside storage of materials and or equipment in a heavy commercial district HC. The property is legally described as being 0 0.24 acre track of land, more or less, out of Lot 8, Block 6, McCall Tract, Far Hidalgo County, Texas. The property's physical address is 1403 West Ferguson Avenue. The property is currently zoned Heavy Commercial District HC. The surrounding area is zoned General Business District C to the south and west. General Business District C and Agriculture and or Open Space District AO to the east and Agriculture and or Open Space District to the north. This area is generally designated for commercial use in the land use plan. The Fire Department, Code Compliance Division and Planning Division all recommend approval. 14 surrounding property owners were notified of the request by letter and a legal notice was published in the Advanced News Journal. 
one person signed up to speak at the public hearing in opposition of the item. Development Services is recommending approval of the request for a conditional use permit to allow the outside storage of materials and or equipment in a heavy commercial district HC. Applicants shall move forward with the subdivision process as well as being subject to the following conditions as set in your packet before you. And gentlemen, we do have representation in the audience. Okay, would the applicant like to say something at this point? My name is Eduardo Lara. I am the occupant of that building, of that property at this moment. We're leasing the property. The building collapsed in late January. Okay. So we're planning on building a new building at the property as soon as we have uh, the property is being subdivided. So as soon as we get our, everything subdivided, we will rebuilt again. So temporarily, we need a place to, to be at. Uh, and that's why we request for this permit. Wasn't that a, a tile business or? It's a tile business, tile, like carpet. That? Okay. Any other questions? None? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. <coughs> we uh, have someone signed up for public we hearing, have, sir. We have a gentleman signed up. Uh, what's that? We do have someone signed up for public hearing. Somebody has okay. signed up, okay. Yes, Reverend Ernesto Garza. Gentlemen, good evening. My name is Ernesto Garza, Jr. I'm the senior pastor of the church. The address of the location of the church is 1700 North Jackson Road. The, I, was, I have stated that I'm against it, but I must qualify that it's a soft against. In other words, I've got some issues that have transpired at that location previously. We've been there at this location as a church for over 20 years, and this location that has been considered has had maybe half a dozen tenants in the course of those years. Some of those uh, have been caused problems, and the last one that was there was a trucking company that uh, was set up for um, educational, for truckers. And when they went in there, they scraped the um, top layer of, of dirt and installed uh, caliche. That caused them a runoff into our property and is currently causing a little bit of flooding I wonder about this business. Like I said, I'm not so much against it. It's just we have some issues that we I'd like to resolve. And I brought some um, pictures that I took. I don't know if, uh, if, if they would like to see them. But this is a problem with some of the uh, properties along uh, our property. And that is that they're not maintaining their properties. We have an issue with rodents, snakes, possums, all because the properties surrounding the church are not kept. And um, I did notice that uh, this property that uh, is being considered has just cleaned up the, the back side of that property. But the pictures that you want to see have a lot of overgrowth and, uh, um, and there's no um, code enforcement. I don't know who would be in charge of that. But the properties are creating a nuisance and I hope that uh, this uh, company would be a good neighbor and maintain their property. You know that we sold the back part of our property to Frito-Lay and in the meantime Frito-Lay has just forgot about um, they have a, a big drainage ditch I think it's a holding pond or something back there. Uh, it's all overgrown with a um, brush. So we, I have an issue with some of the properties around us and that is my hope and concern that this company will be aware and try to keep um, their property maintained. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anybody else? Nobody else? No, sir. Okay. We'll close the public hearing. Open the item up for board discussion. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have a uh, question. Get permission to approach staff? Yes, go ahead. Is there a uh, detention, retention requirement for this property? Uh, it would be going through the subdivision process and uh, it would be addressed at that time. Do you know if currently there's any kind of area that's there is no current area at this moment okay 
have a question on the uh, recommendations item seven if approved outside storage material and equipment will be required to be stored on all weather surface and meet city standards yes sir is that that would be available or are they going to do it or that is available at this moment he has a concrete pad there uh, at this time and so that material is required to be on the concrete and not on any um, green area okay and has this gentleman uh, uh, spoken to staff about his, his uh, concerns pavement everything's been put on pavement now and also we have cleaned up the back of the property already all this was left by the previous people that were there they left oil can big oil can they left rotten trees and everything so we have cleaned it up so okay continue clean, keeping it clean because it looks nice now. <laughs> okay thank you any other questions board discussion none okay we'll close the board discussion open up the floor for any motions mr chairman i move to approve cup 1904-23 second i'll second mr. Chairman. all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. all those opposed same sign motion carries item number six michael c cobos doing business as COSA Properties LLC, a Texas limited liability company owner, has filed to the Planning and Zoning Commission a request for a change of zone from General Business District C to Medium Density Multifamily District R3 in order to develop and construct multi-unit buildings on said property. The subject site is located on the north side of West Kennedy Street with a physical address of 1312 West Kennedy Street and is legally described as being all of lot 22 Beamsley subdivision far Hidalgo County, Texas. The property fronts West Kennedy Street, a 50 foot local street which runs east and west with a posted speed limit of 20 to 30 miles per hour as identified in the city of Far's thoroughfare plan. The subject site was rezoned from single family residential district R1 to general business district C on May the 18th, 2010. The property to the north of the subject site was rezoned from single family residential district R1 to general business district C on October the 20th, 1998. And the property to the east and west is zoned single family residential district R1 and the property to the south is zoned general business district C upon the annexation of the city limits. There have been no other zoning requests within the general vicinity of the subject property since that time. The property is generally designated for commercial use in the land use plan. The medium density multifamily district is established to provide adequate space and site diversification for medium density areas that are a mixture of single family, duplex and multifamily dwellings, units of up to eight units per lot. The area requirements in this district are based on multifamily dwelling units being built on smaller individual lots and needing to coexist with single family residences. This district should not run traffic over long distances of single family residential size streets or throughout single family neighborhoods and should be located close enough to arterials or collectors capable of carrying the additional traffic. 11 letters were mailed out to surrounding property owners and a legal notice was published in the advanced news journal. One individual called in and another signed up to speak at the public hearing. Both are in opposition of the item. Development Services is recommending approval of the request to rezone to medium density multifamily district R3. As the property meets area requirements, has adequate ingress and egress. If approved, the owner must comply with all the city ordinances and city department requirements. This item will go before the city commission meeting of May the 20th, 2019 at 4 p.m. And we do have representation in the audience. Okay, would the applicant like to say anything mm -hmm. on his application at this time? Would you like to say, speak? My name is Michael Cobos. My direction is the 2116 Gold Crescent McCallum. I'm going to say this at, I'm going to change the zone 
para hacer, para hacer un negocio ahí. Hace como 10 años vine con ustedes también y lo hice comercial, pero por problemas económicos no lo pude llevar a cabo. Ahorita se me presenta la oportunidad y quiero ver si me pueden dar la facilidad para poder construir unos departamentos ahí. Okay, thank you. Okay, this item requires a public hearing. Is there anyone signed up to speak on this item? Yes, sir, we have three individuals. The first is Beatriz Gonzalez speaking on behalf of Saul Sanchez. Good afternoon, my name is Beatriz uh, Sanchez Gonzalez. And this is my brother, Saul Sanchez. I'm, in, I'm gonna talk uh, on behalf of him. Uh, just to give you a little bit background knowledge or background information, uh, my parents bought the property at uh, 24B, 24A, 24C as a half acre lot back when it was rural area. So there was just fields there. Um, we bought it, or they bought it with the intention of always being a residential area. We're all up for growth, uh, commercial growth, that's fine. We saw the Beamsley house uh, being torn down when they sold it. We saw the monitor growing there, you know, that they built it there. Uh, but as it stands right now, the apartments that were built on 26 already give us a lot of congestion. We were not, at, we were not informed, or we might have been very busy with different um, situations going on when that was approved on 26. Um, we are available now to protest on lot 22 as being um, apartments there. Um, it clearly does say uh, R3s should not run traffic over long distance of single family residential areas or through single family neighborhoods. There is several houses. There's always been several houses in that area. <coughs> I personally own a property on uh, 1112 Kennedy Street, a little, a little bit further down, um, and it already has been a lot of congestion uh, with uh, tra the trash pickup, noises. Um, so an additional apartment there would not benefit us at all as being a residential area. Um, um, another thing is that <clears throat> on Eisenhower, I know that there was already approved on second floor or two story buildings of apartments. Um, this one, I'm more than likely gonna think that they're gonna try and uh, build as the ones that are on 26, on lot 26. We're just adamantly opposed to it and I'm pretty sure uh, my parents, when they bought it there, wouldn't want for it to be uh, apartments where we grew up. We've been there for nearly 50 years, and we wouldn't want apartments there at all. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, next we have Blanca Coronel. <coughs> Buenas noches, jurado. Este, yo vivo en el lote 21 al lado de donde se van a hacer los... Bueno, mi nombre es Blanca Coronel y mi dirección es 1308 West Kennedy, que es el que queda el 21 al lado de donde planean hacer los apartamentos. Eh, realmente yo me siento un poco insegura si ponen unos apartamentos ahí porque yo tengo dos niñas, una de 12 y una de 11. Y realmente cuando hicieron los departamentos del lote 26, pues no me notificaron. Eh, y pues sí, hay mucho tráfico de, de gente. Tuve que cercar toda mi casa porque cruzan por el lote 22 para ir al Stripes, porque tumban un, una madera. Entonces cruzan por mi casa y pues cruzan por el lote 22 y se van al Stripes y y tuve que acercar todo porque yo no sé si en la noche andan ahí caminando, tuve que comprar dos perros para estar un poco más segura. Enfrente en el lote 26, creo que hicieron como 15 departamentos, supongamos que de tres gentes cada familia, son 45 gentes, y pues no sé cuántos planean hacer en el 22, que serían otros 40, 50 gentes, entonces ya tendría yo enfrente 50 gentes, y pues al lado otros 50 ya serían 100 personas que yo me siento como que no segura porque pues es una área familiar y la verdad no estoy de acuerdo que hagan unos departamentos. 
y pues no me notificaron en el 26, no sé por qué, no sé si bueno, la señorita me va a hacer favor de checarme, a lo mejor no sé si no estaba en el, en el rango, ¿verdad?, de, para notificarme, este, o no sé por qué no recibí, porque yo estoy enfrentito de esos departamentos y pues ahora pues están los del 22. Yo tengo apenas cinco años viviendo ahí y compré porque dije, pues es una zona residencial. Es todo, gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Next we have Rebecca Canchola. Buenas tardes, señores. Mi nombre es Rebeca Canchola, señores, y tengo el lote eh, 20 y el 19. Estoy enseguida de la señora Blanca. Aquí nos construyeron, pues, como 12 o 15 apartamentos enfrente. No tienen ellos ali, que le llaman callejón, y me avientan ramas, llantas, basura, todo. ¿Verdad? Es una verdadera pesadilla. ¿Verdad? Este, yo creo que no es correcto, ¿verdad? Eh, la zona aquí es familiar, ¿verdad? Este, sí me da mucha tristeza con la señora, ¿verdad? Que puso una cerca muy alta, ¿verdad? Y pues no estamos discriminando a nadie, señores, porque todos venimos de una cuna humilde, ¿verdad? Pero a veces hay personas que consumen drogas. Ya he tenido problemas, le explicaba la señorita. Tuve que hablarle a la policía de FAR porque he invadido ahí el, mis, mis lotes, ¿verdad? Ya han puesto eh, cosas de carros, <ríe> ya de, este, asientos de carros y ya habían hecho una cantina ahí y nos insultaron. De milagro no hubo una desgracia. Yo ya les había dicho que se salieran de mi, de mi lugar, ¿verdad? Este, ahí al, a los vecinos. Y me insultaban y le platiqué a mi hijo, un muchacho joven, ¿verdad?, como usted. Y dijo, no, yo voy contigo. Pues le hablaron y se juntaron, ¿verdad? Tuve que hablarle a la policía de aquí, de FAR. Gracias a Dios que fue inmediatamente, ¿verdad? Si no, pues hubiera sucedido ahí una desgracia. No estamos de acuerdo. No estamos de acuerdo. ¿Qué más puedo decirles? Muchas gracias por escucharme. Muchas gracias. Anybody else? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Close the public hearing. Open up the item for board discussion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move this to executive session. Okay. Time is 6.28. All those opposed? Okay, table item. Okay, next item. Okay. Item number seven. Mario Reina, professional engineer, representing. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yes. I'm sorry. Mario Reina, um, professional engineer, representing. Tan Citaro's Finest Fruits LLC owners has filed with the Planning and Zoning Commission a request for a change of zone from Agriculture and or Open Space District AO to Limited Industrial District LI in order to develop additional parking area for the commercial warehouse located north of said property. The subject site is physically located on the south side of the commercial warehouse that fronts 801 West Bonaterra Drive and is legally described as 
a 1.662 acre tract of land more or less out of lot 375 Kelly Far Tract, Far Hidalgo County, Texas. The property is in addition to the commercial warehouse property that fronts Bonaterra Drive, an 80-foot local street which runs east and west with the posted speed limit of 20 to 30 miles per hour as identified in the City of Far's thoroughfare plan. The property is currently zoned Agriculture and or Open Space District AO. The surrounding properties are zoned Agriculture and or Open Space District AO to the south and west, and the property to the north is zoned Limited Industrial District LI which was changed on February the 18th, 2003. On February the 21st, 1995, the property to the east was also zoned Limited Industrial District LI. There have been no other zoning requests within the general vicinity of the subject property since that time. The property is generally designated for industrial use in the land use plan. The Limited Industrial District is intended for industrial parks and larger, cleaner types of industries. The manufacturing uses should be conducted within a totally enclosed building. All activities conducted outside should be screened and buffered, and no external effects such as excessive noise or odor should extend beyond the property lines. The site for such uses are typically a minimum of two acres and an average of five to 10 acres, with a significant amount of the land dedicated to landscaping. Seven letters were mailed out to surrounding property owners and a legal notice was published in the Advanced News Journal. Staff received no response to the letters or to the legal notice. Development Services is recommending approval of the request to rezone to Limited Industrial District LI as the property meets area requirements, has adequate ingress and egress. If approved, the owner must comply with all city ordinances and city department requirements. This item will go before the City Commission meeting of May the 20th, 2019 at 4 p.m. And gentlemen, we, we do have representation in the audience. Okay, will the applicant care to elaborate on his application? Do you want to say anything? Do you all have any questions for him? Not, none? Not really. We're good. Okay. Uh, this item requires a public hearing. Anyone signed up to speak for or against it? No, in the affected area, Mr. Chairman. Okay. We'll close the public hearing, open the item up to board discussion. Um, I have a question. We're talking about a buffer. What, what kind of buffer is this, and why is there a buffer on a parking lot? That, I don't think we've ever had one before like this. No, it's... it's not needed because it's surrounded by agriculture and or open space district AO. Usually they'll put up a, a fence area just to, you know, secure all of the items in their property. I thought it was all commercial. It, it is, sir. It's industrial district LI. Mr. So Chairman, if I may. Anybody ever developed the area to the south? That way the buffer's already there. You'll have a fence. Normally in the past we've asked for uh, uh, just to make it opaque, just in case. Okay. So, any other board discussion? None. Okay. We close the board discussion. Open up the floor for any motions. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second, Mr. Marigal. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Good evening, Commissioners. For the record, my name is Heriberto Martinez, your planner two for the city of Park. Tonight we have five plats for your recommendation. <clears throat> Item number one, Quintanilla Hellion Associates, Inc., representing Eduard, uh, Eduardo uh, Cantu, Vice President of Esponjas Development, LTD, is uh, requesting final plat approval of the proposed Brentwood Estate Subdivision. The property is legally described as being a 
uh, acre track of land out of lot 203 Kelly Far Subdivision Far Eagle County, Texas. The property is located within the 900 block of West Ridge Road. The property is currently in zone single family residential district R1. The adjacent zones are agricultural open space district and general business district C to the north and east. Mobile home uh, district RMH to the south. General business <coughs> district C and medium density multifamily residential district R3 to the west. The property is designated for multifamily residential use in the, uh, in the land use uh, plan. Property proposed use, single family uh, residential. Variances, non requested. Development services, their services <coughs> recommends final plot approval of the proposed Brainwood Estate subdivision subject to the following conditions set before you. This item will go before the City Commission uh, meeting on May the 20th, 2019, at 4 p.m. And for the record, we do have representation in the audience. Okay. Thank you. This item does not require public hearing, so we'll open it up to board discussion. Chairman, I'd like to abstain from the first two items, please, for a request. Okay. Thanks. Any other board discussion? None? Okay, we'll close the board discussion. Open up the floor for any motions. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve subdivision final uh, for subdivision 180101. Second. Second. Oh, Andy. Andy. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Okay. Second Thank item, Quintanilla Helen Associates, Inc., representing Eduardo Cantu, Vice President of Esponjas Development, LTD, is requesting final plot approval of the proposed Carmel Estate Subdivision. The property is legally described as being a 20.27 acre tract of land out of lots 202 and 203 Kelly Far Subdivision, Far Udall County, Texas. The property is located within the 1000 block of West Ridge Road. The property is currently zoned medium density multifamily residential district R3. The adjacent zones are agricultural open space district AO, high density multifamily uh, district R4 and general business district C to the north. Single family residential district R1 and general business district C to the east. Single family residential district R1 and mobile home uh, district RMH to the south. And high density multifamily district R4 and agricultural open space district AO to the west. The property is uh, dis designated for a multifamily residential district in the land use plan. Property proposed use, multi-family use, variances not requested. Also, this item will go before the City Commission meeting on May the 20th, 2019 at 4 p.m. We also have representation in the audience. Okay, this item does not require a public hearing, so we'll open it up for board discussion. Discussion, non-discussion, no discussion. Okay, we'll close the board discussion. Open the item up for any motions. Chair. Second. All right. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Third item. Milton Hunt Inc. representing Jose M. Flores Gonzalez, a managing member for Ten Citarios Finest Fruit and uh, FLMU Properties LLC, a Texas limited partnership, is requesting preliminary and final plat approval. How they proposed uh, Ten Citados uh, Finest Fruit uh, Subdivision. The property is legally described as being a 7.555 acres consisting of 5.893 acres, being on of lots a lot B, resubdivision of lots 4, 5, 6, and 7, PEDC number 1 subdivision, amended, and 1.662 acres, being out of lot. 375 Kelly Far Subdivision, Far Eagle County, Texas. The, pro the property is located within the 800 block of West Bonaterra Drive. The property is currently uh, Zone Limited Industrial District LI and Agriculture Open Space District AO. The adjacent zones are Limited Industrial District LI to the north, Agriculture Open Space District uh, AO to the south, 
Plan Unit Development District PUD to the east, and Limited Industrial District LI and Agricultural Open Space District AO to the west. The property is uh, designated for industry use in the land use plan, property pr proposed use, existing warehouse, variances non requested. Development service uh, recommends preliminary and final plat approval of the proposed San Sectario's finest fruits. Fruit subdivisions subject to the following conditions set before you. This item will, uh, will go before the City Commission meeting on May the 20th, uh, 2019 at 4 p.m. And we also have representation in the audience. Okay. This item does not require public hearing, so we'll open it up for board discussion. No discussion. Okay, we'll close the board discussion. Open up the item for any motions. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve preliminary and final plat for subdivision 190309. I'll second, second that. Second. Mighty God. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion carries. Uh, the next item, Commissioners, uh, Fire Investments Subdivisions, Subdivision, and the project engineer has requested to be withdrawn from today's meeting to May the 28th. No action it's, is needed, no action. No action. Correct. Moving on to number, the last item, number five. CLH Engineering Inc. representing Jose M. Guerra Cantu, managing member for Casava LLC, a Texas limited liability company, is uh, requesting preliminary plat approval at the proposed JG Customs forwarding uh, to subdivision. The property is legally des described as being uh, the west 9.93 acres of land out of, of, of lot eight, Cla uh, John Klausner subdivision of Porcion, Far, uh, Del County, Texas. The property is located within the 1300 block of East Military Highway. The property is currently zoned limited industrial district LI. The adjacent zones, adjacent zones are limit uh, are single family residential district R1 to the north, agricultural open space district AO to the east, limited industrial district LI, and heavy commercial district HC to the south, and limited industrial district LI to the west. The property is designated for industrial use in the land use plan, property proposed use, a warehouse, Variances not requested. <clears throat> Development service recommends preliminary plat approval of the proposed uh, JG Customs forwarding to subdiv subdivision subject to the following conditions set before you. Okay, this item does not require public hearing, so we'll open it up for the <coughs> board discussion. Discussion? None? Okay, we we'll close the board discussion. Open the item up for any motions. Chairman, I move to approve preliminary plat for subdivision 190203. Second. Second. Charlie. Okay. okay, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, we we'll go back to announcements and another okay. business. Oh. We have a tabled item. We were going to go no, we're going to, we're going to go up. Here. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the first item under other business is the election of officers. The following officers are needed to be appointed, Vice Chairman and Secretary. Uh, just be advised that Mr. Charlie Ramirez, he served longer than three years consecutively, so he's not eligible for reappointment. Charlie is okay. <coughs> So the first, first one is for Vice Chair. Any, any make recommendations? I'd like to nominate Rafael Munguia. Okay, Mr. Munguia, do you accept the nomination? I do. Okay, any other nominations? No? Okay, all those in favor? Mr. Munguia, is Vice Chair, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion carries. Now. Next one is uh, Secretary. Okay. Any nominations? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Andy Castro. You accept the nomination, sir? You do? Okay. All those in favor of Andy Castro for secretary? 
Say aye. 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 All those opposed? Same side. Oh, motion carries it. Okay, next item is discussion of dates workshop. Yes, Mr. Chairman. There were some items that were brought up by some fellow commissioners, planning and zoning commissioners. Um, so we brought up the idea of having a planning and zoning workshop so that way we can propose amendments to the zoning ordinance because some of them are really outdated. So the dates that we have in mind for your consideration are May 31st on a Friday, June 6th, Thursday, June 7th, Friday, June 27th, a Saturday, and July 27th, a Saturday. Um, July 27th, that date is after the planning and zoning workshop that we're hosting as part of the uh, APA that's coming down. Um, so we wanted to have a speaker at, on that date. July. What we can do is just um, think about it and then you can let me know. We'll follow up at the next Planning and Zoning Commission or I'll call you individually. Great. Okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. And there's another item. Item three. Yes, item number three is discussion and possible action on conditions set forth by Planning and Zoning Commission relating to fencing requirements for AEP substations. As you recall, back in 2017, we had AEP brought up some um, substations for consideration for special use permits. Uh, we set some conditions for the fencing requirements. Uh, they would like to propose an alternative, so they're here today to have a short presentation for you. Great. PowerPoint. Buying something. Well, you all need to go to the smoking room. Have you not? Yeah. Oh my god. I have the dinosaur rib. Oh, 30 bucks, but. How many live? 
One, two, one. One. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Commissioners, thank you for having us. My name is Juan Ludwig, and I'm the engineer of record for a lot of these AEP projects here in the Valley area. Um, I'm with CDS Murray. We're out of San Antonio, um, and I'm here with Rick Garcia and Lee Jones, um, station engineer, as well as um, public relations personnel. Anyway, the reason we're here is because um, during the 2016 um, year, we, uh, we went ahead and expanded the existing 138 KV substation located on 326 East Minnesota Drive. Um, as part of that life of use permit, um, we were requested to retrofit the Polk um, substation. That Polk substation, or that was one of the requirements. The Polk substation is located there on Polk um, off of 83. And um, y'all probably, oh, it's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a bird's eye view, um, this is the Polk substation. And one of the, um, I guess the reasons and the rationale was um, we needed to do something aesthetically a little bit more pleasing for this particular substation just because as you can kind of see it's pretty <coughs> overwhelming to the, to, the, to the typical standard passer buyer. So what we ended up doing was um, as part of, our, uh, of the requirement we went ahead and evaluated what we could do with respect to retrofitting this substation. So what I'm going to do is um, unfortunately it wasn't as easy as just putting up a wall around all four sides of that substation. So what we're going to do is we'd like to go ahead and um, give you a little bit of background regarding that AP um, substation located on Polk. And what, in order to do that, I'll, I'll go ahead and have Rick kind of discuss um, the, the background with, with respect to Polk substation. Hello, I'm uh, Rick Garcia. I'm the planning engineer for AEP. Uh, just a brief overview of Polk. It was installed in 1957. Um, as you can see here, the next, next slide, uh, we did have upgrades over the years, 57, 58, 73, 81. Um, some of the equipment in there is old, but we do upgrade our equipment whenever it does uh, fail. We go to the next slide. Uh, this is transformer number one of Polk. As you can see there, it is a uh, manufacturing date of February 2001, so we did recently replace that 20 years ago. This next transformer, however, is from 1973 it's almost about 50 years old and you can see there also on our transformers we do have cooling fans these cooling fans are to keep our equipment cool whenever the ambient temperature rises um, whenever there's peak uh, demand which is generally in the summer and the winter times um, if you go to the next slide you can see there the location of far sub on the north east corner <clears throat> polk avenue <clears throat> off the highway and that is the newly uh, <clears throat> young sub that we want to have in service by the end of the year. If you look to the east, uh, the red, blue, yellow, and orange lines, those are the power lines associated with uh, the city of Far. We also have uh, power lines located just south of that as well. Um, if you go to the next, next slide, these are the substations, or I'm sorry, the circuits which would be the power lines associated with the city of Far. We have Hall Acres, Far, and Polk Avenue. If you look here, these for the past three years, 2016, we have uh, customer outage minutes for the whole year of 1.6 million. Uh, next slide, 17 was about 3 million customer outage minutes. This was due to a station outage we had for Polk. Uh, unfortunately, it was uh, uh, about a two or three hour outage and this caused the high rate of uh, customer outages in the area. And if you go to the next slide, it, again, it's about 1.6 million. I just want to emphasize that Polk right now is at 100% capacity. If we don't build young within the next two, three, four years, we want it built sooner, you'll go from 1.6 million to maybe double to maybe even triple with the constant outages that we're having. Those cooling fans that I showed you, the reason they're there is to keep it cool, like I said. If you don't uh, allow the airflow with this wall that you want around the station, the temperature of the, <clears throat> of the transformer is just gonna skyrocket and we will lose transformers constantly. So there will be constant outages for the city of Far um, with this wall without proper ventilation uh, because of the small access of the area. 
I just wanted to inform you all about that. So with this, with building young, generally we want to have our, our transformers at 50%. Like I said, Polk is at 100. With the installation of young, we'll have Polk at 58%. Far substation will be at 53, Hall Acres 71, and then the new young st substation will be at 50% loading. So those outages will greatly decrease once young is in service from 1.6 million to about half that. Thank you, Rick. And the reason we're bringing this up is because um, I, I know we've been working with Roland for the past um, 12 to 18 months with respect to these um, um, commitments that AEP has. Um, and AEP is committed to fulfilling their requirements or um, their, their commitments with respect to retrofitting this Polk substation. However, we started evaluating what options we had. Part of the problem that we have here at Polk is that we're in a confined location in a confined area. That perimeter is pretty much the, pro the, the property um, line of the Polk substation. Now typically what happens is we typically have a little bit more area in order to do retrofits and, 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 and modifications like we need to. Unfortunately in this particular situation um, we, we don't have that luxury. One of the considerations that we actually took into account was possibly moving that fence line over closer to Polk Avenue. Um, and the reason being is that right now, in order for us to retrofit that fence line, um, we've got a battle in between all of those um, 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 distribution poles. And not only that, you have your above lines. Now, one of the things that we did at the, at the far Statcom, which is located off of 326, was we actually um, contracted with a permacast fabricator. They constructed eight-foot masonry walls, um, which I think turned out pretty well, and that's currently what's installed over there at the far Statcom. We used that same contractor, put up some plans, and tried to see what we could possibly do in order to retrofit um, that substation. And one of the big items that we um, came to discover was that installing those walls here at this particular location is going to be a little bit more problematic. Why? Primarily because of those overhead lines. And right here, here's, a, here's kind of another view you can kind of see. Unfortunately, one of the reasons we can't move outside of that existing footprint is that the Hidalgo County Irrigation District Number 2 has an irrigation line that runs right between those two distribution poles. So they will not allow us to move our fence line out there. Um, there is no way we can move anything inside the substation because we've got clearance requirements that we have to adhere to. So um, we looked at even modifying that permacast fence to, to see what we could do um, with respect to putting it along the, the frontage, but it's just going to be incredibly difficult. One of the, 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 the issues that we ran into was the installation. Typically for these permacast walls, they're um, eight foot tall, um, 10 foot wide concrete panels. So they're heavy. Um, in order to support them, you need your concrete piers to be anywhere from 24 to 36 inches in diameter. So there's no way we can um, install that wall right there along the frontage. Now along the, the south, the west, the east, it is possible. But because of what Rick identified with respect to the ventilation concern, um, we, we, we had a discussion with Roland because I know initially Roland said, hey, we really want these things to be opaque. No one really wants to see that, and, and we're in agreement. They're not the most sightly things to look at, but unfortunately, in this particular um, situation, after evaluating the status of Polk, evaluating the age and the configuration more than anything else, because as you can kind of see there, um, everything is right alongside the property line. That substation can't grow anymore. We're, we're already at our, at our capacity. So one of the things that we explained to, to, to the planning department was that when we put a wall here, there's got to be some type of ventilation because one of the things that we proposed to do was actually um, install um, the permacast wall around the west, the east, and the south sides, but with some ventilation panels. And what do those ventilation panels consist of? That's um, the, a, a snapshot of the permacast wall over there at the farm, at the Statcom location there off of 326 East Minnesota. So what we did was we went ahead and evaluated a combination of um, the wall along with some openings. The openings were not going to be conducive enough to provide the airflow that we needed to. So um, we've actually been through quite a few iterations with the city um, to try to determine what's an equitable alternative, um, how we can make it work. Um, another option that we talked about was um, placed, placed, using ornamental fencing. And I think that's actually probably a, a good option, a good alternative. Now, you're not going to be able to obtain your 100% opaqueness, but in combination with the um, nice masonry wall and the ornamental fence, um, in our opinion, we think that it's a good compromise and it serves both, both, both facets. 
it provides the station with the ventilation that it requires, as well as it makes that POC substation a lot more appealing and aesthetic. Um, and that's just kind of a snapshot of the ornamental fence. Like I said, we'd, we were proposing to maintain our same gates at the same locations, which are two on the west side, one on the east side, and then maybe installing a, um, a few of these panels um, along the, uh, the, the south side. Now, um, according to this plan, what we're proposing to do is along the north side where you have those distribution lines and those low-hanging low um, power lines, our recommendation would be to utilize that ornamental fencing all the way across. And unfortunately, it's not going to provide you with your 100% um, opaqueness, but, but quite frankly, there, we, we've evaluated and we cannot, put, we cannot safely put that permacast wall along that northern face. Um, constructability issues and, um, you know, as, as, you know I, I <laughs> looking at where that fence line is, we actually de dodge and dip in between power poles. And those are distribution poles. Those, um, that, that power that's coming out can't be, we even considered um, potential outages. But as Rick mentioned, um, this POC substation services quite a large area. Um, putting an outage or, or, or requesting an outage for this location is not feasible. And that's one of the reasons that we had to consider different things. We even um, considered modifying that, 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 that wall. So in essence, what it comes down to is we're looking at two different options. Um, and, and we're hoping that, that, um, that the commissions, um, commissioners are amenable to it. Either utilizing a combination of this permacast wall with this ornamental fence or possibly um, considering something along the lines of a vinyl fence. This is something similar to what's been constructed there at the city of Corpus. Um, you know, it, it provides that opaqueness. Um, in this particular case, that's a, a, a customer service driven substation. So it's um, AP provides power, but the customer was actually the one that enclosed that area. And, and basically this is kind of what it looks like. You've got vinyl fencing, but because it's uh, a secured area, um, we had to reinforce the, um, th those panels because they're vinyl panels and then put some type of um, of uh, a five strand uh, of strand barbed wire right on top for security purposes. Now, um, you know, what we would propose is something similar to that, and that's always an option, but then again, we'd also um, recommend installing, um, you know, a couple of panels of that uh, ornamental fence just so that you can get that ventilation. And that's kind of what we wanted to address with, with the commission, with the commissioners, because um, in our opinion, what we've been doing for the past 12 months just about is trying to find um, something that is going to benefit the city as well as, as, um, as the station. The last thing we want to do is install um, a wall system that is going to adversely impact the city. Reliability, in our opinion, will be greatly compromised. Um, you know, just to make it look a little bit nicer. So what we're hoping is that the commissioners can see past this and understand, hey, there is a reason why we want to go ahead and construct this thing to make it look nice, but at the same time, take into consideration the, 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 uh, the practical um, maintenance and operation of this equipment, especially in this particular case. Polk, unfortunately, isn't like these other substations where you, everything's a little bit more spaced and configured a little bit with more... Um, more area for, 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 for adequate ventilation. In this particular case, we're kind of up, uh, up a creek without a paddle because we really need to account for those um, type of issues and factors. And um, I, I guess the second part is we're also in the process of constructing young. And one of the items that we have to identify how we're gonna address is um, that, that wall around um, the young substation. Um, this is kind of a, a, a layout. And this is the young substation that's currently being constructed there off of Sioux Road in Jackson. Um, what we originally proposed to Roland and, and, and the planning department was installing that permacast wall around the substation pad. He had identified that um, it probably looked a little bit better if we installed that barrier, that, that, that fence around the, the station itself. And um, one of the recommendations was considering putting up that vinyl fencing around there. And I think um, in lieu of that permacast fence around the station, that is something that's certainly um, an option. And you know, uh, assuming that the commissioner, the commissioners are in approval, that's something that we can proceed with. So basically, we've got uh, a couple of decisions to make with re with respect to Polk. If that is acceptable to to the commissioners, we can either determine that we want to utilize um, vinyl fencing, or we can use that masonry fencing. But of course, on the ma on the on the masonry fencing, the recommendation is to put that ornamental fence right along the northern part, so it's still visible with respect to the. Uh, to, 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 to the views off of Polk Avenue, but 
it, it's it's something that I think will go in line with um, with the actual um, perimeter wall. Put it. Are there any particular questions at this point that we can address? Um, Mr. Chairman, can I interject? Um, can you put vegetation around that fence area? Uh, I, and I'll tell you why. You put up a wall, 75% of the time, it's going to get tagged. We understand that, and that's okay. why we normally go with the, <laughs> the chain lake application. Can you put oleander? Well, if you can see this, one of the reasons we're oleander, that's a good option. But in this particular case, um, we've got distribution lines that are overhead. Mm -hmm. And that o is one. Oleander op grows maybe a max 10, 10 feet. What do you mean trim? We can trim. Um, Any other suggestions? I mean, you know. sure. I, I mean, we could we, we can um, it, determine I, I maybe drop tolerant um, shrubs in the front. Right. Uh, I mean, that's a possibility. No. One of the things right. that we did want to try to avoid is any type of potential obstruction and maintenance because normally what happens is that I know with um, some vegeta nat natural vegetation, it just springs up. Mm -hmm. And the last thing we want is any type of um, trees or anything overhanging right there and True. potentially causing a problem. Right. So, and, and, and unfortunately, part of the problem that we're dealing with is that our footprint is small. Um, on, the, on, the, on the south side and on the north side, we have no property line. We're right on it. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it makes it a little bit difficult, but my understanding is that we can work with the drainage district, the Hidalgo County Irrigation District, and maybe put some shrubs or something that's low line along the front. Yeah. Um, you know, make it a little bit more palatable. Uh, that's yeah. certainly an option. That um, would work think, because putting a six foot fence you know, uh, you're just asking. Well, that was our concern as well. Um, yeah. You know, you, you, you try to meet the requirement, but at the same time, you know what's going to happen. When you have a nice little canvas like, like this, mm -hmm. I mean, we know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not looking forward to it. Typically, on our standard um, um, projects, what we typically do is we'll put a, a, a cyclone fence around the station, and that's for security purposes. It's total eight feet tall. It's got barbed wire on top, and that's because we want absolutely no one to get in there. You know, it's not it's not to the benefit of the city. It's not to the benefit of AP. Um, it's just a, a problem waiting to happen. But with those security measures, we've been pretty um, lucky with respect to avoiding um, um, trespassers going by. But with this <coughs> fence requirement, it makes things a little bit more complicated. Typically, on our property fences. We use five-strand property fence. Basically, it's just to keep people out. Mm -hmm. The problem that we're finding out is that I don't know that the city is in agreement with having that five-strand property fence around the property. I mean, we like it because then we can even make it a smooth, a smooth bar bar, so it doesn't look quite as bad. But it, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't quite match with the aesthetics of the area. But I can tell you right now, I'm in agreement. I think that that's a nice little canvas, and um, it's going to be right off the sidewalk. So. Yeah. I, I, and, and, and I guess we're, we're kind of torn with the fact that that's probably more than likely what's going to happen, especially if you've got 2,000 linear feet of it strung across. There's going to be one area or the other, and that's why we typically, we, we like going, using what, what, what makes sense to us and what has worked in the past, which is that five strand, it just keeps people away, you can't tag it, <laughs> yeah. and it keeps it clean. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, if I, if I may. I've had experiences with, with the vinyl fence. I, I see it being very fragile, uh, very, very, it, it moves with wind. It, it's very delicate too, especially if we get high winds, <coughs> which we hardly get any here. But And that's a good point because uh, we, we one do. of the things that we did do was we actually checked with the manufacturer to, to identify what kind of wind rating we had for these fences. In this particular case, we'd have something that's um, rated at a higher wind capacity. And typically the way they um, achieve that is they'll have the panels themselves, the vinyl panels, and they're about eight, eight to ten foot t um, wide, but they'll reinforce them on the center. Um, the posts themselves are typically hollow, but in this particular case, they'd be filled with concrete as well as some reinforcement, aluminum reinforcement. But, but I, as a matter of fact, there's one in front of the McAllen Library that we went to go visit, and you're right, I was able to push that, and that was one of the main concerns that I had with respect to utilizing this equipment. However, this particular one has been designed to avoid that kind of problem, you know. But the same thing, the th same thing applies. It's not as sturdy as a as masonry wall. The transformers are how far from the north fence? I'm sorry, what was that? The transformers are how far from the north fence? Um, I'm not sure where the where the tra the transformers probably. I know the capacitors are within 10 feet, right? <coughs> yes. Uh, 
Capacitors are about 10 feet away. I didn't ask side. about the capacitor. I asked about the transformers. Transformers are about, I would say, 60 feet. 50 feet. And 50, the capacitors are, are how high off the ground? They are about 15 feet off the ground. Okay, so both of the capacitors are well above the, any fence of uh, 10 foot above. Yes, sir. And the, and the transformers are what, 50 feet from the north fence line? 50, 60 feet from the north fence line. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. What, what kind of, that's what I was, if I may, Chairman, my question is going to be along the lines of that airflow that you guys talk about. Of course. And I personally don't understand it because you're, in, you're just in an open area. And just if I can finish sure. real quick. And the equipment, as Mr. Wiley alluded to, is off the ground. Comparing the masonry wall to the vinyl, there's not even a comparison. Those things break. Everywhere I've seen them, they're, they're, they're not good. They're not going to be there for longevity. Uh, I personally think the best solution is the masonry solution. And if you want to add some vegetation to it, add ve vegetation that can help you for security, kind of like a bugambilia, which is nice. Sure. And if you want to climb a wall and you want to go through that, half of your clothes <laughs> is going to stay there, including your, your skin. So if that's the objective, then there's ways to overcome that. In my opinion, I think the real question is, our citizens are a little bit concerned about these stations and where they're located and if they're close to them, not only for health issues, but because it also affects their property values. So we want you guys to help us with that, if we can, right? Make it to where it's at least a piece of, uh, uh, um, mm -hmm. it's not appalling right to people because they're, it affects people's pockets. And no one really talks about that, but those are the issues that we want to see if we can overcome for our citizens. And that's what we're asking for you guys to help us in that regard. Absolutely. And if you go with a masonry wall <coughs> versus the, if you have a vinyl and a masonry wall, the airflow is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have, I, I'd like to see what those numbers are that you need to get to. And by all means, we can, we can find gaps there in that fencing or in that wall to get you that proper airflow. And that's for this station. In future ones, you should have the perimeter that adheres to what those sizes are, what they regulate you, right? Where you have those 100 feet, 80 feet of space, I'm sure you can get some proper airflow. Now, I might be wrong. I'm just stating my own personal opinion, but we've gone over this a couple of times. And I can give you one example before I finish. Out at the beach, I don't know if it's you guys or Magic Valley. Who's, who's got that substation out AP there? AP has the, the sun chase. you guys. I, I commend you guys for the job that you did there. And I think that's a 15 or 18 foot fit, uh, wall. And it's masonry. And it's got a real nice design. And that sucker's in there. And I assume it's getting all the proper <laughs> airflow. Uh, the, right? the configuration so, at sun chase is a little bit different. A little bit different. But, I mean, similar, right? Uh, Concept, yeah. Similar thought. So my opinion would be more along those lines. So I, I applaud you guys for trying to uh, come back and, and, and provide us a, a good alternative. I personally think that the masonry would be the, 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 the most appealing. If we run the risk of graffiti, then we can put bugambilias around that have thorns. There's ways to be able to overcome that, and it beautifies your, uh, your area there. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to the discussion to executive session. Okay. Mr. Chairman, may I uh, ask ahead. a couple questions? Could you go back to the aerial view where it shows? Of course. Uh, I guess the, the satellite image right there. there. So along Polk, I understand the logistics of trying to get the permacast panels in there because of the cranes and the overhead lines and stuff. That's what you were alluding to, right? Sure. But why can't you build a modular CMU fence along Polk Road? Well, what we were trying to do was, um, and that was also something that we considered, um, these panels typically, um, because we've used them and they're pre-engineered, it sounded like the, the, the ideal thing to do. Um, one of the concerns that we have with some type of modular block <coughs> is that right there, we've got a small little area between both of, uh, between the distribution lines as well as the overhanging overhanging line so the modular build is something that possibly could go in there but because of the distribution poles where they're logistically located it, it's not going to look it's not going to be a nice little wall 
Um, you're going to have interfer interference with those distribution poles. Got guy wires. If I may, your your spiral wire, your razor wire at the top, your spiral, that's a 10 inch spiral, isn't it? Or like 12 inches? Sure. An eight inch CMU fence is eight inches. So it's actually narrower than the top of your fence now. So you could build an eight inch CMU wall right between all those poles can, in place of that chain link fence, could you not? It's possible, correct. It's possible. You could also then, build, oh sorry, you could also build the wall where you can well, they, you take out some of the blocks um, for ventilation. For ventilation, you, you can put in the screen blocks every now and then right. for ventilation purposes right. in a CMU fence. Right. You, okay. And so if you put up temporary barricades and pull down that chain link fence, a long <laughs> polk at least, you can do a CMU, Let me take this one out. you know, block Just wall that can be plastered. Or if you want it to look like stone like the rest of the permacast, you can adhere stone to that. Mm -hmm. Or you can put... Uh, bogambilias in front of it as a as a as a tag barrier I suppose right sure that, that's always possible and, and I the think the other three walls that go around the perimeter if you go back to the aerial view okay that can be the permacast along the other three walls sure any any objections with the with the with the gates that are being proposed the and ornamental then, gates I'm just thinking of options for them and if you go back, the gates, what side are the gates on? Only because I can't see them on the, oh, okay. on the aerial view. The, the gates are, here, I'll let me put, go back to the aerial view. The, you've got two along the, um, along the east and then one on the west. And west, you see the driveway yeah. that's, north. yeah, north is north. Up. North, north is up. Oh, right. Polk, Polk is north. Polk is north, okay. Yeah. So you have gates where, sir? So you've got them um, um, right there along the driveway where the trailers are. You've got two at that location. The east and on the west? Correct. You got two on the east and then one on the west. Okay, so let's. So, to the south side. So, so, so the south side. You're right. We'd we'd like which to. Which is where our pre prevailing winds come from. Is where and there's less visibility on the south side. Correct. Correct. So on the south side, you can actually put in your permacast wall ventilation ports. And. On the north side, in the block wall, you can put those screen blocks that allow some ventilation to go through. Okay. Have you tried calculations on the ventilation that would do that and, and see what that would do for you? No, no. What, what we were trying to do was um, try to see something that was uniform, something that we've actually used in the past. Um, you know, the, 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 the CMU, that was um, something that re we really hadn't considered. We used the, the prefabricated panels. You're looking at about 170 linear feet of, uh, of installing that. And to us, it just made <coughs> sense to be on the conservative end. Um, and, and, and just for the record, um, what we're talking about is placing multiple ventilation points. And um, whether that's going to do any type of adverse uh, effect to, to the actual system, um, I don't know. We were trying to err on the side of caution. Um, it, it sounds like the commissioners are more inclined to to, 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 I guess, compromise a little bit more for the aesthetics because that's, that's what we wanted to do. We actually proposed at least three eight-foot spans on the south side and then the full, um, the, the full ornamental fence on the, on the, on the north side. And, and that was just because we want to make sure that we don't have any issues. Um, the fact that it's an older substation, it's configured as such, um, <coughs> we, we, were, we, were, we were interested in erring on the side of caution. Um, well, if we start caution as far as the cooling capacity of it, absolutely. Okay. And I think what the city PNZ had approved prior was we're looking at at concealing the substation. We're looking at hiding it. We're looking at you know the eyesore, right? Trying to cover it up a little sure. bit. Sure. And so the ornamental is zero coverage. I mean, of course. It's, it's, it's of course. But but and that's why we that's why we're here because we're saying that. If we want to fulfill the requirements for that, that the city is imposing, then we're compromising the substation. That's what we wanted to convey to the commissioners. Right. And, and I think the commissioners understand the heating and cooling capacity, especially Mr. Wiley, who is in the industry. Sure. Uh, but I, I'm looking for something from a construction perspective, is that if it's possible to achieve the city's objective with a 8-inch CMU wall on the north side, your permacast on the east, west, and south, with ventilation ports, and then your gates that go on the east and west, maybe those can have additional ventilation. 
would that suffice for adequate ventilation to keep I mean our prevailing winds are from the south mm -hmm. and, and naturally you would need them to vent out possibly some to the north of but course an eight inch uh, an, an eight foot block wall if you have ports on the south side that wind will come through cool the towers and shoot up over the fence on the north side um, I, so is that before the commission even goes and discusses it is that a viable option um, it's not AP? well it's not one that we really considered like I said what we're what, what the commissioners are, are, are proposing are multiple small openings and um, I guess for first glance in our opinion that wasn't going to achieve what we wanted to with respect to ensuring that we had pretty good ventilation because right now um, that's a, an operational substation and, and just the employees that work in there they, they, they they're going to admit to you even when it's you know um, open on all four sides it still gets pretty darn hot and what the commissioners are, are proposing is that well we want to conceal it and that's understandable the problem that we're saying the, the problem that we're mentioning is that um, I think it's going to come at a cost because I think that ultimately what's going to happen is we're going to compromise the integrity of some of this equipment in there for the sake of making sure that we're um, covered so to where we're not exposing any of the substation equipment. And I, and I think that's, that, that's, that could be a potential problem um, with respect to the integrity of the substation. Now, the young substation is coming online, which is going to take or offset some of the burden from this um, Polk substation. But this substation was originally constructed in the 50s. Um, not all the equipment has been updated, and we are going to see problems with that substation as well as with some of these other substations if we're required to go ahead and encase them 100% in those type of um, confined areas. When are you planning on updating your equipment there, or when it, would that happen? Well, I, I think it goes in phases, right, Rick, based on, on when it's required? Yes. <coughs> Sorry, go down. Down. <coughs> So Young will be brand new usually right now we don't have anything currently for a rehab for this station uh, generally it's only when uh, an outage or failure happens then we do replace it um, are the newer stations more efficient than the older ones yes sir how much more oh, um, how much less ventilation do you need on those new ones versus <clears throat> the old? with with the new vent with the new with the new systems or the new substations we have a bigger footprint um, unlike Polk, which is a small is the equipment still more efficient? It should be, right? I mean, it is. It is, a lot, it is a lot more efficient, yes. Okay. Yeah, can, question. So the property to the south side, that green area, that all belongs to you guys as well, doesn't no. it? No. No. It doesn't? It belongs to Because your, par your, your parking lot, is, is that your parking lot on the... To the west. To the to west? The, to, no. To the west, no. Basically, our property line is right there along the asphalt. Sorry, right there. <coughs> Okay, and on and on the left side, that parking that lot, that's, that's that, that is yours, because well, that parking lot extends past your property line to the south. I'm sorry, this property. No, parking to the, the left side. That green space is yeah. 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 The yeah. parking yeah. lot on the left. Oh, this one. Here. The parking lot. Yes. The parking parking yes. stretch. That's, uh, yeah. that's, that's, that's someone else. Keep that's not yours. Right. But you have gates on that side. Okay. Yes. Correct. Basically, we have gates right here. We have one gate right here. So. That is your property line. So there's no way to go. Correct. And, and this is a problem. Um, west and east, you know, we've got a little bit of space, which we need to do something down the line. But this is the problem right here. This is the bottom of this parking lot. We're on the property line right there. The Yellow County, you can see the stand pipes right here. Correct. Yeah, your, I mean, your fence is the property line on that side. Pretty much. So, unfortunately, we, we, we can't move out, we can't move in. So, what we're trying to do is we're, um, you know, we operate these things, or these gentlemen operate these things on a daily basis. And they know, they can see what's going to happen if we proceed with doing what, what you know, what ideally would be, be preferred. But in, in them seeing what will happen, have you calculated the CFMs that those fans require and, and the impact that a block screen wall would have on it? Or is this? Um, not, not yet. This is based on the O&M that, that is actually um, done on these substations on a routine basis. Um, the, the input that we received were from the people that actually go and maintain and operate this equipment. 
I understand, but I mean, in every application, those transformers with those fans that are there have a calculated CFM that they require to cool that at a, at a you know X amount of, uh, of a ratio, eighty percent capacity or ninety sure. percent capacity requires X amount of CFMs with an ambient temperature of. 120 degrees because we're in South Texas. Of course. Right. And getting hotter. <laughs> and getting hotter. So have you run those calculations? No. No, we haven't. What we basically did was we <clears throat> heard on the side of caution and based on our input from our O&M professionals, they basically said, hey, you guys need to give us some ventilation. And from a standpoint, from, from the design standpoint and looking at what the, the age of this equipment and the operations of this equipment, we wanted to make sure that we um, were conservative in the approach. You know, the bottom line is that if, if you want 100% opaqueness, there's going to be a problem. Now, we, 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 like I said, we, we looked at the, the small openings, and after discussing it with our own end personnel, um, they they had recommended, hey, you know what, we, we need something a little bit a little bit bigger, and, and that's what we try to do. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to avert or, or come to a compromise with the city. Um, you know, obviously. We'd prefer there being a nice little wall around it, but that was the reason we went through the, through, the, through the little presentation with respect to how important this particular substation is when it was constructed and um, the potential implications if something were to go wrong with this thing. So um, we're in agreement. We'd like for it to look nice, and we think that we can make it look nicer. But is it going to completely encase your, your substation? Our recommendation is that it doesn't. It's not going to be good for the city. Uh, better question. Timeline. Mm -hmm. When do you plan to expand to the rest of the green area? Well, right now, I don't think there's any plans. Yeah, basically, these substations are, are, are designed and configured such that they're in different locations because um, they basically provide se um, energy to or power to, to certain sectors. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have everything in one particular location because that means that it travels further. Now you you know, figure further you would have already upgraded for new exactly. equipment on this side. Exactly. This, you know, we're, we're pretty much at, at capacity at this one, and that's why we're offloading the power at another location several miles away. Right. You know, so it's all, logist it's all logistically and um, 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 there's a strategy involved with the logistics of these substations. Okay. So, uh, you know, the bottom line is that we're, we're trying to provide something, and we're not skirting the issue. Um, you know, there's been a lot of time in the design, um, a lot of, lot of a lot of effort put with getting different alternatives, meeting with the irrigation district, meeting with the city on multiple occasions. The question is not to skirt the issue of the commitment that, that AP made with the city. Same. But I, 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 I would like to, to, to just make mention that we, we, we'd, um, we're open to compromise because we think that we can provide a product that's going to make it look a lot better. But if you want it to be completely encased, it's going to come to the de it's going to come at the at the detriment to the city because you are going to have some problems with with failures. Uh, I mean that's just the bottom line, and um, you know we can go through the calculations and start seeing you know different alternatives as to what's going to work and what's not going to work. But um, is that property to the south yours? No. AEPs? No, no sir. Okay. Fred Harms. Okay. No, I know the guy. But all that green area to the west is theirs. Exactly. And right now, they, we've got easements, I mean, distribution and transmission lines that run to the west. And, and the intent was to, to utilize it as a, 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 I mean, we went through the design and, and put and something down so that we can get those panels installed and what have you. And I'm not too familiar with permacast, but uh, can you add some kind of louver to that? I mean, it adds that opaqueness and still gives you your, you know, your flow? Well, and, and see, that's... The problem isn't with the por with the portion in the back. No, I understand. Because um, and we actually looked at to put the louvers, and um, <laughs> well, you, you've got you've got several hundred feet, and you're going to have to put a a, a a louver on each one. And we were looking. You know what? It's Cost on the south. The same. <laughs> it, well, it, it, yeah, it's it's a pretty penny because it's a thousand dollars for every one. You know, one of those twenty-four by twenty-four openings, in addition to the panel itself. Um, so you know we. We're trying to look at it from a reasonable perspective, but also from a pragmatic point. You know, um, <clears throat> we've got more circulation with these wider panels to the south. That's not a big deal. The problem comes with what's in the front. And, um, you know, the CMU, that's definitely an option. But um, I, I, I guess I, I'm not too enthusiastic about putting all those little, um, you know, louvers in the front. I, I, I don't know that it's going to look. <laughs> I don't think it's going to achieve what you would like for it to achieve. Let's put it that way. The city's trying to achieve, you know, concealment up to eight foot high. And I think a block wall would conceal the, the 
the location up to eight foot high. And what you put in front of the block wall, you know, would then decorate it, whether it be a, a, a cast stone on the face of it or oleander bushes or bougainvilleas or anything else like that. So one more, the question would be then if on the south side, which is actually doesn't have street visibility, if that can remain an open type of chain link fencing or ornamental fence along the south side of it, there's no visibility from the streets and that would give you adequate ventilation. Perfect. It's, it, it's a compromise that we're, that, that, that know, helps Fred, the overall. Fred Harms can look at the ugly all day long. I mean, that's his <laughs> view on the south side. But that's something that the years, commission been can able to sell it. consider. <laughs> okay, I think there was a there was a motion on the table. Yeah. Yep. Second, motion, motion, motion for executive session. We okay. also, gentlemen, if you guys want to consider uh, item C six, yeah. you need to untable it if you want to talk about it in executive. Okay. No. Okay. I don't even remember what item. I need a motion to untable, untable, untable that one. You want to untable it? Second. second. Untable that motion. Second. Okay. Yeah, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Somebody move to take it to executive. I move okay, to then, uh, to pursue it. I move to uh, take those two items to executive session. Okay. Second. The time is 7:31. And in accordance with the chapter 551 of Texas Government Code, the Plan and Zone Commission hereby gives notice that it will meet in closed session. Time is 7.58. We have returned from closed <coughs> session. Where we, we will continue with the board discussion. The untable item first. Untable item. Yeah. Uh, Chairman, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to approve change of zone 190424. And I'd also like to um, address the citizens. We understand your concerns. But we'd like for you to, if you have any further questions, approach our staff and ask them any other questions that you might have or concerns. But we feel that based off of their proposal and their request, that there's uh, really no reason why we should deny this request for the uh, rezoning. So I'd like to make a motion to approve, Chair. Second. Second. Thank you. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Next on the substation. would have been the other tabled item. And the other business. Other business, yeah. On the uh, discussion of the uh, AEP substation, the fencing requirements. And Mr. Chairman, in regards to that one, um, I'd like to make a motion that we adjust our previously approved. Uh, per the minutes of uh, April 10th, 2017. So currently we have, uh, as approved, a 100% opaque eight-foot block wall, 100% around the property. Uh, and I recommend that we modify that to be a 100% opaque eight-foot block wall around the north, east, and west side. And allow on the south side an open type chain link fence. And then just make one clarification per the minutes we had uh, recommended surrounding that particular block wall with a solid eight foot gate. And instead I'd like to make the clarification that any gate is to be uh, solid eight foot as well. Uh, so I think there was three that were being recommended. Um, and leave the rest as is. Okay, second. I'll second Mr. Chairman. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion carries. Okay. No further announcements or business. Motion, yes, sir. motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to do that. You'd like to adjourn. Second. 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 <laughs> Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion carries. Let's go.